So, good morning, students. I'm here to uh, discuss this Cantor's intersection theorem. Uh, but uh, uh, we will actually prove a uh, basic of this Cantor's intersection theorem, what is usually known as the nested interval property. And then I will give the statement of uh, the more general version of this nested interval property, which is now usually called Cantor's intersection theorem. But we will restrict ourselves only to the subsets or the intervals in the set of real numbers or in the uh, real line, what you call it, as topologically or geometrically. So, uh, In, in nested interval property, this is a property of real numbers. And uh, indeed, here we will apply this monotone convergence theorem to prove this nested interval property. But uh, if we assume uh, nested interval property, we can also prove the monotone convergence theorem. They are equivalent. So uh, we have this uh, in uh, what is this nested interval property? We have to consider uh, if we have a sequence of nested intervals nested intervals means uh, you can say that we have a sequence of decreasing intervals uh, like uh, you have interval i1 which contains i2 and it contains interval i3 and so on if you have a decreasing sequence of intervals and uh, here we are considering closed and bounded and non-empty intervals of course Non-empty will, uh, uh, of course, will mean that your a n is less than or equal to b n. And, uh, and the additional uh, hypothesis that we have in this nested interval property that the length of these intervals uh, should uh, go to zero as the number n tends to infinity. And this length, you know that if you have an interval, if your interval is uh, with left end point A and right end point B, then its length of interval is given as the difference of B minus A. This, is, this actually gives the length of the segment that this interval represents on the real line. And uh, in Cantor's in the nested interval property, we have to consider that this length, this limit must go to zero as n tends to infinity. And uh, so with this hypothesis, I will repeat that we have to consider a sequence of uh, non-empty closed and bounded intervals. And this sequence is nested such that the length tend to zero as n tends to infinity. Then the conclusion says that the intersection is non-empty and contains a unique point. This intersection contains a unique point. And I will, I will add this thing that this uniqueness point uniqueness of a point in this intersection are you uh, this singleton being this intersection a singleton is a consequence of this assumption uh, or the additional hypothesis that the lengths tend to zero okay so looking at the proof proof will require uh, central to the proof is the monotone convergence theorem but then we require the order preservance of the convergence by this convergence of sequences and uh, we also require this for the uniqueness in the uniqueness part we will use this squeeze or what you call it a sandwich theorem also so uh, let me begin with the proof okay uh, just a minute okay so uh, give, starting with the hypothesis that uh, since we are provided this hypothesis that uh, this is a nested sequence or a decreasing sequence. And uh, you can see this thing that uh, if you have this nested sequence, uh, that means then if I n has the left end point A n and uh, right end point is B n, and this interval is containing this next inter interval A n plus one and B n plus one. And then clearly this inclusion implies that uh, a n has to be less than or equal to a n plus 
one and uh, uh, a n plus one being a n plus one and b n plus one being the point left end and right end points uh, of the same interval respectively. So, and then we will have this uh, a n plus one less than or equal to b n plus one. And now you see this thing that this b n plus one uh, is containing in this interval i n. I n is a n. And bn and so bn has to be less bn plus one has to be less than or equal to bn and so thus we have this inequality this type of inequality and this type of inequality is uh, you see here uh, just uh, let me change the color actually i would like to bring in different color i'd like to use eraser also I don't, yeah yeah there is a razor okay so you look at this so because of this we have this inequality this is what i explained now and now if you look at the two sequences separately one sequence a n and from the first half of this inequality and circled in red this implies that this sequence a n is increasing and uh, second half from second half we get to see that this sequence pn is decreasing so we have an increasing sequence and a decreasing sequence or simply it is too good to say that we have monotone sequences and uh, now uh, another thing is that uh, you see each interval in this sequence is lying inside this single interval i1 i1 contains all the intervals so that means simply that simply means your all these endpoints of these intervals are lying in the interval i1 and what is this interval i1 and this interval i1 is uh, uh, with left hand point is this i1 is a1 b1 and you see that all those in all those elements are below a all a n's are belonging to this uh, this interval and so therefore a n has to be less than or equal to b1 for all n and also a1 is the smallest because the sequence is increasing and therefore it is found now that this sequence a n is a bounded and increasing sequence and therefore by monotone convergence theorem it has to be converging and similarly uh, looking at this sequence bn bn is also lying in this interval a1 b1 every bn is here and clearly this implies that bn is greater than or equal to a1 and since this bn is decreasing sequence so b1 is the biggest among them so this means that this sequence is also bounded and uh, this is decreasing and again another application of monotone convergence theorem says that this sequence bn is also convergent and so both these sequences a n and b n of left end points and right end points of this nested sequence of intervals are convergent and uh, let us suppose that a is the limit of sequence a n and b is the limit of sequence b n uh, now I have to see this thing there. It is clear from this above inequality first here that each a n is less than or equal to b n, and we know that the convergence preserves the order. If the convergence sequences have terms of the convergence sequences of a particular order, then the limits will have the same order. Therefore, a will be less than or equal to b. But we will show actually that this a is equal to b, and a this common value will be in the intersection. Uh, but uh, now how we are going to show that this a is equal to b this a equals to b will follow from this fact that uh, in hypothesis we have this thing that your length of intervals is decreasing to zero so using this fact we get to see that this that means length is decreasing to zero means bn minus a n is a convergent sequence and its limit is zero 
but uh, we know that sum of convergent sequences is convergent sequence and bn and an both are convergent sequences so their sum here we have the difference and the difference is also convergent so uh, bn minus b uh, an will converge to b minus a b n converges to b a n converges to a so the difference will converge with difference of the limits but the uniqueness of limits will imply that b a minus a is equal to zero uh, that is to say that b is equal to a and this proves that is uh, these two limits are same and uh, if this common value belongs to the intersection it, because we will see this thing that this common value is in every interval a n and this is quite clear from this particular inequality you see that a n as an in increasing sequence so it has um, and uh, in monotone convergence theorem the limit of an increasing sequence is its supremum so a has to be bigger than all the a n's but uh, each a n is less than or equal to b1 so it is this is it but here we have shown it to be equals to b and this sequence of bn is decreasing sequence and in decreasing sequence if it converges then that its limit is infimum therefore b has to be smaller than every bn and this clearly implies that this a belongs to this interval a n b n for all and so we have this one element which is common to all the uh, all the intervals i n s and this simply implies that this a belongs to a belongs to this intersection i and hence as far as now it it, it has been shown that this intersection is non empty now we show the uniqueness the uniqueness are you just, you can just say that we have, we have to show that this intersection contains exactly one point no more than that this intersection is singleton so okay here is so for the uniqueness we suppose that there is a element x in this intersection uh, but as can be seen that if x is in this intersection then x has to be in all the intervals a n b n or uh, that is to say that a n is less than or equal to x less than or equal to b n but you know that a n converges to a and b n also converges to a number which is same as a so these a n and b n have the same limit and you can treat this x as a constant sequence and constant sequence x will converge to x itself and by sequence theorem or this is also called sandwich theorem the sequence theorem states that whenever you have the Two, three sequences obeying this particular order a n less than or equal to instead of x if you had c n c n less than or equal to b n if left and right and sequences converge to the same value then the center sequence that is sandwiched between squeezed between these two sequences is also convergent it converges to the same limit therefore this constant sequence x converges to a but x converges to x itself therefore x has to be equal to a and this proves that whenever there is an element in the intersection then it is nothing but it is x it is a itself hence it proves this uniqueness now i will state this um, what it is called the general form of this cantor's intersection theorem for the subsets of the real numbers it uh, it is it states that uh, if we have a uh, sequence the uh, nested sequence or you can call it as a decreasing sequence of closed and bounded subsets of r n is a closed sequence of uh, closed and bounded subsets of r such that each cn is non-empty then this implies that the intersection will also be non-empty intersection will also be non-empty but uh, 
if we if we if we define the diameter of a set, uh, let me define a diameter of a set. Diameter of any set where A is a subset of real numbers, it is defined as the maximum distance of the points in that set. And if with this notation, and if we assume the additional hypothesis on this Cantor intersection theorem, usually it is stated in that form with the additional hypothesis. In some in some some text, you will find it without this additional hypothesis. Uh, and if we, if we assume that the diameter of this these closed and bounded and non-empty subsets of this nested sequence, if this diameter tends to zero, then the intersection will contain only one point, or what you can call it, either the intersection will have a unique point. Or in sets language, it is better to say that it is a singleton set. And this is the general state of Cantor's intersection. So I stop here.